Have you ever wondered what Harry Potter would look like if it was set in Eastern Europe? Well, look no further, because today I'm bringing you Hogwarts with what mental torture and existential crisis. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, hi, I'm Anna, a Transylvanian villager and this is Read and Play, the series where I review fantasy books by playing video games. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. In today's video I would like to discuss a very unique fantasy book called Vita Nostra by the great Ukrainian author duo Marina and Sergei. Diachenko, which portrays a mildly depressing version of the classic magic school trope showcasing the disheartening process of growing up or rather being forced to grow up. In the gameplay I'm gonna explore the Lotric castle and defeat the Dragon Slayer armor, so stay tuned for an epic boss fight. But before we jump into it, I would like to give you a few random facts about the homeland of the authors, Ukraine, since most of you probably only know it as the country of Chernobyl. Good night Chernobyl moon. Good night, radiation house. Good night, melted phone. Good night, glowing milk. The heart of the continent, Ukraine, is the largest country whose entire territory is in Europe, with Europe's largest military and Europe's largest desert. It is also the home of the world's deepest metro station, the world's prettiest tunnel, and the world's longest musical instrument. It is known as Europe's breadbasket, thanks to its large quantity of wheat production, which plays a huge role in the global food industry, which is referenced by the colors of their flags as well. Contrary to popular belief, their iconic drink isn't vodka but holy and they are the inventors of the kerosene combustion lamp as well. Not to mention that Ukraine has a literacy rate above 99.9%, .9%, which is quite impressive. So without further ado, let's dissect this novel. Co-authors Marina and Sergei Diachenko are a married couple from Ukraine who wrote around 28 novels, 15 novellas, 21 short stories, 5 children's books and 1 play together. Damn. Most of their works are originally published in Russian and in some cases in Ukrainian, but sadly not many of them were translated to English. Their works fall into the category of fantasy, sci-fi and fairy tales and they describe their work as M-realism, not specifying what M actually stands for. All right then, keep your secrets. Their books are quite unique, outstanding and beautifully written, often taking a dark and deep tone, and that describes their most famous novel, Vita Nostra, as well. But what is it actually about? <laughs> Nostra tells the story of a Russian teenage girl named Alexandra Samokina, aka Sasha, a bookish, hardworking high school student who meets a strange man called Farid during her beachside holiday with her mother. Farid forces her to complete a series of strange and repetitive tasks, such as swimming in the ocean at night and other more disturbing ones, which begin to interfere with her everyday life and ruin her last year of high school and her grades. Eventually, she is forced into attending a seemingly unknown and questionable university called Topra Institute of Special Technologies which is in a remote rural area of Russia. Although the book is often compared to Harry Potter, don't expect this institute to be anything like Hogwarts. There are no flying brooms or talking paintings, not even Quidditch, yet some of the experiences Sasha goes through are more soul-sucking than facing a Dementor. Because as the narrator describes, this institution of higher education has no such concept as mercy. Sasha gets introduced to a handful of interesting characters, love interests, rivals, roommates and friends who are similar forced into attending the dubious institute. The older students look battle-worn and broken down, the teachers are in every way suspicious, and Farid's influence over the students is straight-up terrifying. Aside from the general school life drama, such as romance, heartbreak, bickering and bullying, we get to witness the growing distance between Sasha and her mother, who recently got into a new relationship and had another child. But those are the least of her problems. Although some of her subjects at school are quite mundane, such as physical education, one of her classes requires them to memorize some strange and unintelligible text which refuse to be memorized. The seemingly impossible text becomes terrifying, addictive and dangerous, which turns out to have some magical background being a violent expansion of the mind. And with that we get to see Sasha's dark and depressing metamorphosis into adulthood. The title Vita Nostra is a reference to a Latin song that everybody who attended the European school probably despises. Gaudiamus Igitur is a song we were forced to sing at every ceremonious event during our high school years, which sounds like this. <laughs> Although 
the song has a sullen and cheerful tone, the lyrics are quite dark, such as the segment referenced by a title. Vita Nostra Brevis est Brevi Finietur means life is short and will end soon. Venit mors velociter rapid nos atrociter means that will come soon and snatch us quickly. Nemini parsetur, nemini parsetur means nobody will escape, nobody will escape. Quite a depressing song to sing at the beginning of a school year, right? Now the plot is in every way engaging and although it's quite slow sometimes, I never got bored of it. I was invested in Sasha's private and school life and as an Eastern European woman myself, I found her character to be more relatable than any mainstream fantasy character I ever read about before. Although some parts of the plot were quite bizarre and difficult to digest, the novel itself became what the specialty lessons were for Sasha, a confusing yet alluring mess. So from my perspective, the plot deserves a big thumbs up. If I had to describe the world of this book in one word, that word would be Kafkaesque, since it's quite reminiscent of the oppressive and nightmarish qualities of Franz Kafka's fictional world. In case you don't know, Franz Kafka was one of the major fiction writers of the 20th century, whose work fused elements of realism and the fantastic. His books are usually about an isolated protagonist facing bizarre or surrealistic predicaments and incomprehensible social bureaucratic powers, exploring the topics of alienation, existential anxiety, guilt and absurdity. His work had a massive influence on literature, and one of the most famous authors whose work reflects his impact the most is Haruki Murakami, which is especially visible in his controversial masterpiece Kafka on the Shore. Franz Kafka's most famous book is Metamorphosis, which tells the story of a middle-class salesman who inexplicably turns into a huge insect. Vita Rostra has a clear Kafkaesque influence, drawing many parallels to the aforementioned Metamorphosis. This novel combines elements of the bizarre and realistic in a very relatable way. On one hand, we get to see a real and relatable part of Sasha's life, growing apart from her mother as she gets older, getting into complicated friendships, being peer pressured to lose her virginity, getting slut shamed, getting annoyed by her roommate's smoking habits, getting drunk, having a small crush on her PE teacher. Those are all things most girls her age are currently experiencing in real life. On the other hand, we get to peek into this bizarre universe where people are forced to do all kinds of disturbing repetitive tasks, to learn a strict form of discipline that is rewarded by omitting up golden coins, which is then paid as an entrance fee of a school that forcefully expands one's mind to become more than human. In this world, people are forced into learning something they don't understand, and if they refuse to, their loved ones get punished. This adds a great twist to the mainstream contemporary magic school trope, turning it into something dark and mysterious. In short, students are blackmailed to attend a school where they have no idea of what they are studying, have no vision of what the expected outcome is, they don't know what they are supposed to accomplish or what they could do with that degree after school. You know, like studying liberal arts or gender studies. <laughs> Calm down, I'm joking. This setting has an atmosphere which is probably quite familiar to you if you grew up in a post-communist country, given the psychological effects of the fear and the emotional torture this school pushes onto people. But let's not read too deep into that. Since many parts of this world aren't explained, as a reader you won't get hung up on the technicalities of this universe. The soft magic system is wild and entirely incomprehensible, which forcefully changes people and gradually makes the plot more and more strange, which leads to a confusing ending. It was it's interesting to see Sasha slowly distancing herself from the realistic side of the universe and slowly being absorbed by the absurd, showcasing the cruelty and the necessity of the pursuit of knowledge. So all in all, this is a 10 out of 10 world building. The book was originally published in Ukraine in 27, written in Russian, then translated to English by Julia mitov over a decade later. I wasn't able to read the original script since I don't speak Russian, but I was stunned by the English translation. I don't know how well it reflects the writing style of the Diachenkos, but it has left a deep impression on me. The descriptions of the setting were quite visual and easy to imagine, the reflection of Sasha's emotional world makes her effort to see relatable, and the realistic dialogue makes the character dynamics profoundly believable. Some of the most memorable lines come in the forms of lectures dropped by the teachers of the institute or Ferret himself, such as Sasha, the world is full of entities that people cannot negotiate with, but somehow people survived, don't they? There are lots of contemplation on life, human existence, and the intent to rationalize the bizarre elements of the novel's universe in a Kafkaesque manner. For example, nothing corporeal has any significant value. Anything that is truly valuable is beyond material substance. Or, but no one had 
never been saved by memories, no one had been protected by words and pledges, and those loved greatly by others died too. And of course, the authors seem to have a very interesting definition of love. Love is not when you are aroused by someone, it's when you are afraid for that person. True story. I absolutely enjoyed devouring this book page by page. The wording, pacing and the narration are quite up my alley, so I am definitely giving the writing style a big thumbs up. I jumped into this book expecting a post-Soviet version of Harry Potter and I am glad that those expectations haven't been met. As a huge fan of Kafka's literature, this book suited my taste like a glove. Although the universe was quite bizarre and strange, lacking a clear and detailed explanation, it still felt real and believable thanks to the contrast between the absurd elements and the mundane ones. The dark tone highlights the uniqueness of the story on the scene of contemporary magic school fantasy. It's a wonderfully written book with a lovable protagonist, filled with interesting characters and believable relationships. So I'm gonna give it a 5 out of 5 stars. With that said, I think it's time for me to dive deeper into the works of the Dietrenkos and read books such as The Scar and The Daughter from the Dark. But enough about my opinions, have you read this book or are you planning on reading it? Tell me in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. I am currently trying to change the main focus of my channel and talk about the literature and gaming related topics of this area. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe and press that notification button. Button. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day!